Hi, I'm Leah. And I'm Tanya. And we're lucky enough to be studying computer science. Hi, I'm Tanya. We think it's terrible that 90% <laughs> of schools don't teach it. They definitely didn't offer it at my high school. Thanks, thanks. So we're trying to make this video to show that anybody can learn. We want to get 10 million students to do the Hour of Code. Hour of Code. Hour of Code. The Hour of Code. Hour of Code. Hour of Code. Hour of Code. Yeah! How do you get him to get to the sunflower? He needs to do some actions. I got it. Hey. <laughs> oh. And then we'll run it and see what happens. Uh, <laughs> amazing. Ah, there oh, we go. We just wrote your first program. I wrote it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the code that you just wrote. Very awesome. I thought like code was like FBI hacker symbols and stuff. <laughs> a little bit of problem solving, a little bit of logic. It's like instructions. Programming is a lot easier today. Don't just play on your phone. Program. All right. Awesome. How does someone go about getting a job? Maybe take an online class, find a class at a community college. You can get one of the best paying jobs in the world. I think medicine's moving into the whole computer age. Technology touches every part of our life. If you can create technology, you can change the world. So we're excited that you are participating in today's Hour of Code. We just did two lines of code. Three lines of code. Four lines. Seven lines. Five lines. Five lines. Sixty lines of code. Ninety-nine lines. Sixty lines. Eighteen lines of code. Seventy-five lines of code. Doesn't matter how old you are. Those are pretty The hour of code. 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 Whether you're a young man or a young woman, whether you live in a city or a rural area, Everybody in this country should learn how to program a computer. And I just completed the hour of code. It's actually really easy to learn. Girls should learn this too. Understand that language Woo! that's going to be the, the future. Anyone can learn computer science. And you can learn too. Jack Dorsey, Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, all of y'all, I'm learning. Give it a shot. Here and now they can't tell me nothing. We give that to the people. Spread it across the country. Labels out here and now they can't tell me nothing. We give it to the people. Spread it across the country. It's the hour of code, and we are, and I am working on. Uh, well, I kind of want to call it like a find your way through the maze. And what happens is you just like have a monkey, and then you use the up, down, right, left codes, and you go through there. And it's a maze, and once you get to the end, there's like bananas that you can get. Um, I actually really like Scratch, especially um, probably because you can program it by yourself, and other people can go on there if they want to see it, and they can play your game if you share it. <laughs> so yeah, I, I really like that. Uh, they worked on a programming, a coding program for kids called Scratch, which is where they kind of program little toys or little uh, characters they make to follow the demands they give them, move or jump or change colors. They were also working on coding um, using Python, which is a national coding program that's using a lot of software we learned. And they worked on coding a robot to try to trick a human into thinking they're talking to another human. So they thought that was fun also. It's right here. Nope. No, come on, please. Come to a wall. 
How are we going to get Lana home? Who do you want to send her? Yes! Let's see. No. Turn left, so now we're facing this way. Which way do we need to go? Yes. Yeah. We're going left, so we need to go forward. forward. Okay, we've gone forward. So now we're here, which way do we need to go? Up? So I'm here at Swansboro Elementary School right now. Earlier today I was at Hunters Creek Middle School and I just came down here to Onslow County to speak with a group of students, uh, hopefully to impart some wisdom and uh, inspire uh, these young folk to stay focused on their dreams, to take their academics seriously, and to recognize that you know everybody's path is their own individual, one, but uh, we're all here to serve a purpose and to do something special and hopefully that's what shined through today because it's uh, it's something that's born out of personal experience for me and um, I just want them all to know that, uh, that they can do it and to stay focused on what's important. I have the pleasure of talking to you a little bit about my job and what it is that I do. And really you guys, I have the most important job in the whole wide world. I am a teacher. And do you know why teachers are, are so important? Why do you think I think teaching is the most important job? It teaches students. And who are the most important people in the world? That's right. You look around, look at your neighbor, because you guys are looking at the most important people in the whole entire world. You guys are the most important people in the whole entire world. Because you guys eventually are going to grow up. And each and every person in here, there's something special that you're supposed to do. Do you believe that? You guys all have something that you're supposed to do. There are no accidents, okay? You guys are here for a reason. And everybody has a special talent, a special gift. For some of you guys, it may be something different. Maybe it's computers. Maybe it's drawing. Some of you all, maybe you like to sing. Anybody here like to dance? All right, my dancer. Okay? Everybody has something special. And there might be a couple of different things you can do that you're really, really good at. OK, and it's our job as teachers to make sure that we teach you as much as we possibly can and that you take all of your little gifts and your talents and that you grow those talents, that you grow them real big and that when you become adults, you can, though, you can then take your gift, take your special talent and do something great with it. Do something great. And guess what? You maybe might even be able to make a little money. Right. But more importantly, you may be able to make a change. You may be able to do something that's really important. And so all of you, everybody, and there's like, what, 40 kids in here at least, all of you all have something special. And it's our job as teachers to make sure we bring that out of you. And so that's why I consider this job the most important job in the whole world, because I have a bunch of little people, and I teach high school, so they're not so little. They're kind of big. Some of them are even bigger than me. Some of them have a bigger mustache and a beard than I do. Can you believe that? In high school. Yeah, crazy, right? I didn't get a mustache until I was 25 years old. So some of these kids are 15 and they already have mustaches. But it's my job to make sure that all of them in themselves find something special. And that when they find out that they're special, that I help them to realize what it is that they've been put here to do. And so all the different subjects that you guys get taught, whether it's social studies, whether it's language arts, whether it's music, these things are going to contribute to making you a very well-rounded adult. See, when I was your age, I actually was not that great of a student. It's kind of a secret. It's not something I tell everybody. I'm telling you, okay? When I was in fourth and fifth grade, I kind of used to get in a little bit of trouble. I didn't pay a lot of attention in class. Sometimes I would joke around with my friends. You know, sometimes I might talk too much. You guys don't do that, right? Yeah. Everyone, maybe, right? Every once in a while. Way to be honest. <laughs> right, that's good. Way to be honest. So sometimes, some, I heard somebody say sometimes, why well, I used to do it a lot of times. And because I was too busy talking and too busy joking, what do you think happened to some of my grades? They dropped. They dropped, right? Now, do you think it was because I wasn't smart? 
No, it wasn't because I wasn't smart. I had good parents who always told me that school was important. They told me to pay attention. But, you know, kids don't always do what their parents tell them to, right? Not always. Yeah. Most of the time, maybe, but not always. Well, close. Well, sometimes, well, a lot of times, like I said, I wouldn't listen to my parents. And I would, you know, joke with my friends, and I would get sidetracked. And my grades suffered. They dropped as a result of that. And it got to the point where I started not believing in myself. I started to think that my grades were low because something was wrong with me. And when I thought something was wrong with me, I quit trying. I no longer believed that I could get good grades, that I could do well in school. And so instead of paying attention, I didn't even try anymore. I just went to school to joke around and goof around and have a good time. But you know, I had a teacher in high school, a very special person to me. Um, he was a teacher that changed my life because he saw that I was actually, it wasn't that I wasn't smart, it wasn't that I wasn't capable, it's just that I wasn't focused. And you know, initially we didn't get off to a very good start because when I got in his class on the very first day of school, he kicked me out. The first day, pretty bad guys. But it was because I deserved it. I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. And I expected him, after he told me to go into the hallway, I expected him to say how bad I was being and to tell me that I was going to the principal's office and that I was in really big trouble. But that's not what he told me. You want to know what he told me? He looked at me and he said, you know what, I can tell you're a very smart young man. And I can tell that you have a lot of potential to be somebody great. And then he told me these words. He said, I could teach you so much so much if you would just listen. And you know what? I had to make a decision that day, you guys, whether I was going to continue goofing around and joking in the back of the classroom with my friends or whether I was going to believe my teacher, whether I was going to believe this man who said that he saw something special in me. I was used to being the funny guy, being the class clown, but suddenly it wasn't funny anymore because the joke was on me. And I said, you know what, for this guy to pull me out of his class on the first day and for him to tell me such nice things about me, that must me mean he sees something special in me. And I decided that I was going to stop and I was going to do what he asked me to do. And I was going to listen because I wanted to learn. But most importantly, I wanted to prove him right. I wanted to show him that everything that he said about me was true, that I was smart that I did have potential. And so I decided that day that I was going to pay more attention. And wouldn't you know, when I started paying attention, what happened to my grades this time? They went up. They went up. And actually, I graduated high school. And guess what I did even after high school? I went to college. Never thought I was going to go to college. And I went to college, guys. And when I went to college, I had a blast. I had a great time. I ended up finding out that, you know what? Just like my teacher told me. And just like my parents have been trying to tell me for so long that I actually was smart. I did very well. I made a lot of friends who were also smart, who were also focused on their schoolwork. And uh, I learned a lot. I helped to develop, it helped to develop me in, into a, a, a pretty decent young man, I'd like to think. Um, and I eventually graduated college, something that I never saw myself doing when I was a lot younger, when I was joking around, and when I wasn't paying attention. But that dream came true because of this teacher. And initially, I did not go to college to be a teacher. I went to college to do something else. I, I really like writing. And, anybody like reading here? Do my readers also like writing? Are you good writers as well? Yeah. Good, yeah. Let me tell you something. The ability to write is a skill that will take you far. And I got to let you in on a secret. There are a lot of grown-ups who don't write very well. So if you can learn how to write well right now, think about how much better you'll be when you get older. Okay? I loved writing. I loved words. And so I went to school to be a journalist. But things didn't turn out the way I, I expected them to, and so I had to find a job doing something else. When I was younger, I always liked working with, working with kids. That was one of my first jobs, working for the park district and doing arts and crafts with kids. So I said, you know what, I'm going to go into the schools. 
And so I worked a job where I worked with kids who, the kids who used to get in trouble a lot. And they were kind of like myself. And so I got to sit these kids down and talk to them and say, how come you're not going to class? How come you're not doing well? And what I learned about them was they were a lot like I was. And so I was finding a way to help these kids out in the way that I really needed help when I was their age. And it felt really, really good. And it felt so good that I said, you know what, I wish there was a job where I got to be around kids all the time. A job where I could like teach kids about different subjects, a job where I could mentor kids and they could look up to me and I could show them the way. And you know what I realized? That job already exists. That job is called teaching. And so immediately when I discovered that I really enjoyed this work is when I decided, you know what, I'm going to be a teacher. And it's been the best thing that I ever could have chosen to do. Every day I get up, I wake up with a smile on my face. I go to school excited because I get to sit in front of a classroom with kids and I get to share experiences with them for 90 minutes. And we get to talk about all sorts of different things. I teach world history. Right. So we talk about all sorts of things. We talk about everything from the invention of the wheel to math to science. Sometimes we talk about new inventions, sometimes wars, all sorts of different things. I get to talk about those things with kids and I can teach them things that they didn't know before. And I get to help them learn that. And when you see a kid get excited, you know how it feels when you learn something new that really makes you excited. Teachers can see that, too. And when you see that excitement on a kid's face, there's nothing uh, that makes you feel better than to be able to give that experience to a child. And so this is incredibly rewarding work. Um, it's, it's something that I can't compare to anything else. It's like somebody gave me a million dollars. It'd be nice if somebody gave me a million dollars as well. <laughs> but this is the closest thing to it. Right? It's, like, it's like winning the jackpot. It's like winning the lottery. And then you know what's even greater is when I have kids that I used to have in class who graduate, they get older, and then they come back to visit me. And they're grown, and they went to college, or they have jobs. And you know what they say to me? They say, thank you, Mr. Ford. Thank you for believing in me. Thank you for teaching me. Thank you for pushing me. And that makes me feel special. Even though I'm 34 years old, it makes me feel like uh, I'm that little kid. Uh, and in and, and, and that teacher's class when he said something that made, me, that made me smile. And so I enjoy this line of work and hopefully, even though I know some of you are engineers and some of you are coders, but hopefully some of you are, when you get older, maybe you might want to be a teacher. Maybe? That's okay, I understand. He's like, no, nah, no. Nah. You know what, if that's what you want to do, you should do it. Because like I said from the beginning, everybody in here has a purpose. You understand what purpose is? Who knows what purpose is? What's purpose? Purpose is like, if you have a purpose to do something. That's right. Like, if you do something bad, a teacher might ask you, what's your purpose of doing this? That's right. Good example. It's like a reason, right? Good. There's a reason why everybody's here. And so finding your purpose is finding the reason that you're here. I really believe in my heart my reason for being here is to teach children. Your reason for being here, my friend, may be to make video games, to make awesome video games. Not just video games, but awesome video games, right? Okay? Somebody else's reason or purpose may be something else. But I can guarantee you that whatever your purpose, whatever your reason for being here is, is usually something you're passionate about. Does anybody know what that means? Passionate. What do you think that means? Ooh, yeah, something you feel good about, something that you could do it all day and not even make any money and you'd still be happy, right? And you probably like video games, don't you? Yes. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you find something you really, really like, something you're really passionate about, and that usually there's a reason why you're passionate about it is because it probably has something to do with your purpose. And so once you discover that thing, once you find out that thing that you really love doing, that makes you feel so, so good, you put together a plan, okay, for how you're going to make that happen. And you say, in five years, I'm going to be here. When I get older, I'm going to be doing this. It's about having a vision, having a plan, 
and knowing where you want to be when you grow up. Um, nobody has it all figured out, but everybody can dream, right? Okay? You guys need to make sure you have a dream. Have something that you want to do. Have something that you really want to shoot for. And make it big. Don't make it small. Because why do something small? You're going to go, go big, right? Make sure your dreams are big. And then also make sure that you believe in yourself. There may be people when you tell them your dream, they say, you can't do that. Uh, maybe you should choose something else. I don't think that's a good idea. But if it's your dream, if it's something you're passionate about, don't you let anybody take that away from you. You believe in it. Bless you. You make sure you believe in it and you keep striving for it. Even right now, you work hard on your grades. You make sure you listen to your parents. You spend time learning about that thing and you go for it. Go as hard as you possibly can. You know, because this is your life and this is your first time being here, right? So nobody can tell you it can't be done because you've never been here before, right? So this is your purpose, your passion, right? And you got to put that plan together to make it happen for yourself. Hi, I'm Joyce Lancaster, Prince Port Hunters Creek Middle School, and I'd like to take the opportunity to thank Mr. James Ford, North Carolina Teacher of the Year, for coming out to speak to our 6th through 8th grade AVID students. He talked to them about setting goals, his journey on becoming a North Carolina teacher, and his goals from this point on. It was really a very inspirational speech, and again, it was a wonderful opportunity for our students, and thank you, Mr. Ford, for coming out. Like, while the near north it has, is kind of density, but it's more grass like than the far north. My country is Egypt, it is in Africa, and my most favorite fact about it is about the things how they write their names. The reason why is because um, they, they're about like the symbols they have. This is a G. A, these are two B's and Y. Hi, my name is Brayden, and what I like about Egypt is the pyramids. They put their rulers inside the pyramids and fill them and fill the pyramids with gold, gold jewels, and they they wrap the dead bodies up of their rulers, and it's called a mummy. Hi, my name is Taylor Amos. 
and I'm talking about the fun facts about Chile. And Chile has the most longest and biggest underground pool. It can hold up to six, 66 million gallons of water. And also, um, Chile has the most oldest mummy. It is about a million years old. I'm Chase Brown and I'm going to be talking about traditions. One tradition is instead of writing Christmas letters to Santa, they write Christmas letters to the parents saying how much they love them. Instead of having a regular Christmas tree, they have a tree called the Seppo tree and they have different kinds of, they don't wear any special clothing, but they do do um, some things called, like they do dances and they read stories called, like the legend of Bafana and things like that. Hi, I'm Jada Richardson and our project is on Italy. Um, they eat olives and roasted peppers and pasta and broth. They eat, um, the most popular food that they eat is lamb. It's the most popular meat that they eat. My name is Ajaya Mitchell and Today we are doing um, Nigeria, Kenya, and Ghana. For today, these these fingerprints mean that we are all united in one one country. Like Africa, we are all united. We are in one country. We have masks that we all made. What I like most about was making masks in art class because it really showed that um, that um, we really care about our countries that we had. Um, Nigeria is one of the richest countries. That's um, because of the oil in Nigeria. Hi, my name is Kendall McMahon and my class did Chile. And as you can see, we're doing Christmas. So we're gonna talk about the similarities and differences between America's Christmas and Chile's Christmas. Well, as you know, America's Christmas, which is us, we have rain and it's really cold weather. But for Chile, it's warm and there is never snow. It's always hot there during Christmas. Hi, this is everyone and we're gonna study the flag of Chile. The white part of the flag stands for the snow-covered Andes Mountains. The blue part stands for the progress and honor and the blue for the sky. The red part stands for the people who died during the fight for independence. What's so cool about Germany is that there's great locations and it has restaurants, new sports, and skiing, and the highest spot in Germany is called Zugspitz. And the part that I loved about this is the Berlin Museum. Japan and part of our um, team built Mount Fuji and Mount Fuji is a big volcano. Hi my name is Zoe and we did our project on China and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the hand drum, hand held drum and it's it's sometimes they use it for parades and sometimes they use it for dances.